Ted Benson. Um, Ted is the author of Building Pioneer and the founder and CEO of Benson Wood and Unity Homes based in New Hampshire. So welcome, Ted. Thank you. <laughs> I've got the last one. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I'm the uh, founder and owner of three um, related building companies. Uh, but I'm going to talk about bikes because it's more interesting, more fun to me. <laughs> so this is my bike. Um, it's pretty special to me, and in fact, I think because there are so many bike components out there in the world, I think this bike is unique in the world. I don't think there's another one like it. I have my own taste. Um, I picked every one of them. I installed every one of them. So I'm pretty proud of that bike, and you won't find another. It actually came to me like this. It was, uh, the frame was built by a English frame builder who's kind of renowned, and I was kind of lucky to get him to build it for me. But from there, um, because there is so much standardized on a bike, those actually five points, everything else is a standard component, manufactured by hundreds of thousands of small shops, large shops, big manufacturers all over the world. <clears throat> so the bike industry is completely integrated, um, completely standardized, and it's based on just a few standard connections. And because of it, there's maximum um, ability to optimize, customize, and personalize, which is exactly what I did on my bike. And the components themselves have subcomponents that are also standardized. And, <clears throat> and right down to the heads of the screws and bolts, also those heads are standardized. So when I take off on a bike, that's my bike tool. I can fix anything on the bike with one little folding tool. So does all this standardization affect diversity? It does not. It increases it. There's a bike for everything. You've got street bikes, road bikes, race bikes, mountain bikes, fat bikes, <laughs> city bikes, country bikes, tandem bikes. There's a bike for everything. You can get exactly what you want. There are just a few standard size wheels. Does that affect diversity and choice? No, it increases it. There's a wheel for everything, mountain bikes, road bikes, fat bikes. I've got a fat bike with five inch tires. I've got a road bike with one inch tires. And here are tires. There's a tire for everything. Anything you want uh, is possible because the industry is so integrated and so standardized. There's a few connections here. <clears throat> that are standardized, the stem to the handlebars. And from there, any handlebar you want. You can even get one handmade for you. Same with the fork. The headset is standardized. The forks offer incredible diversity. Road bikes, touring bikes, mountain bikes, whatever you want. There's a seat for every butt. <laughs> And that's because of the standardization between the seat post and the saddle. Believe me, you can get comfortable on a bike. <laughs> You're determined to do it. I have special pedals. There are so many pedals out there that mine aren't shown here. Uh, but that comes from the standardization of the connection from the crank to the pedal. That standardization means there's diversity. And as a result of all this standardization, what has happened to the industry? You can get anything you want and anything you want um, at any price point, and it's usually really well made. You can get a frame for $46, but there's one for $4,700,000. I think it has a few more features, and it's probably a little bit lighter. 
and, and the wheels. Um, anything you want at any price point. Here's 26 or uh, 1.9 thousand for a wheel. <laughs> uh, the crank, $24 or 424. 424 is a little better, but that $24 crank will work forever. A saddle, $20 or $600. It's an amazing industry. As a result, at the end of the day, you can get a bike for $80 or $14,700,000 or $14,500. So it's an incredible industry connected by component makers all over the world because about five things are standardized. Here's a house. There's nothing, nothing in that photo is standardized across the industry. Not even the windows. The windows are standardized by the manufacturer and it's likely that in that railing system there's some standardization by the manufacturer but there's nothing in that photo that is normalized across the industry. It's an incredible problem. And it means that everything here is basically bespoke. It's like it's someone building a bike for you in your yard. Incredibly inefficient and it's affecting quality, diversity, cost choice, we suffer only for the lack of standards. The big production builders solve the problem this way. They make a standard and repeat it again and again and again. And therefore, they can lower the cost, improve the quality of the production and the quality of the product, but the consumer gets like no choice. Maybe the countertop and the paint colors, but that's about it. And that's unfortunate. This is our factory. We're in southern New Hampshire. It's one of the most advanced factories in North America. Completely digitally connected from design to fabrication, CNC production, cutting and shaping, assembly, the finest equipment in the world. We're really good at what we do. But we suffer for the lack of standards that are in the industry. And typically when we get a project from the field, we have to adapt our systems and our products to that design. We do it all the time. There's no particular problem with it except cost is a little higher because we have to do all that engineering work and we have to transfer architectural designs to <clears throat> actual designs. So here's the solution. It's in that book, The Power of Modularity. A few basic rules like the computer industry has in modularity or the appliance industry, and as was suggested by the McKinsey report that Deb talked about, and you can change everything. Nearly every industry operates this way. Ironically, in homes, there are actually some things that are standardized, like interior doors. Therefore, there's incredible choice in interior doors. And you can get an interior door for $91 or $2,500. That's because of a few standard sizes. The kitchen cabinet industry is completely like the bike industry. So here's a sub-industry within the building of houses that is really well integrated. There's a lot of companies that don't even make anything. They just assemble from components that they get from elsewhere. And as a result, the appliance industry is standardized. So those, that dishwasher and that range and that refrigerator fit in slots that are defined by the kitchen industry. And even the hardware, down to the poles. 
And again, you get this incredible choice, $5 or 100 for a hand bowl. And the lighting industry, because the receptacles are standard, has incredible choice, incredible options. $24, $1,800. Faucets and sinks in the <clears throat> bathroom industry, completely integrated. And you have really good choice and really good products at quite a price range. So we're proposing something that our company has been doing for 25 years a modular coordinated operating system, as McKinsey suggested, with a macro grid and a micro grid. It's pretty simple, two feet and three inches. And from there, everything can be standardized. We've been doing it for 25 years, so we have a huge library of components that are the outgrowth of that. A little bit of standardization, and everything becomes a product. Bathrooms, kitchens, closets, wall panels, roof panels, floor panels. And so we can customize every product because they're made from standard components. So that's a bike. <laughs> so at the heart of it, that's a bike with wall panels, floor panels, stair, stair systems, deck structures, screen porches, roof panels, all standardized, all coming out of a library, all with an existing file. Everything uh, to make it possible for quality to go up and cost to come down. <clears throat> We're working with a multifamily a company in the Boston area, <clears throat> and they've put together their little library of wall panels that they're now trying to use on all of their projects. <clears throat> we launched Unity Homes on the basis of these standards. So here's our VARM platform, totally customized for a client. Here's a trad, a different model. Think of these like Lego kits. We simply distilled this huge library of standard components, so we had predictable outcomes. <clears throat> we call this the montage method because you assemble the design, you assemble the components, and you assemble the building in exactly the same building component. Here's another one, and I had to show this. <laughs> uh, that's a home we built in uh, at Dartmouth, at the Dartmouth campus <clears throat> in uh, New Hampshire, 100% out of standard components with a bike leaning up, up against the fence, 100% <laughs> out of standard components. And the building on the right is one we did on national TV with uh, this old house in uh, 2009. And uh, that's 100% out of standard components. So anything is possible with just a little bit of standardization. And it's where the industry needs to go. Thank you. Okay.